Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. Today we're going to explain how to file an order of protection in Illinois. We have uh, a series of videos and articles we've been doing about orders of protection. So if you want to learn more information, we've got a bunch of videos on orders of protection at learn-about-law.com. Today we're going to talk about the mechanics of actually filing an order of protection. Let's start by refreshing everyone's memory on what an order of protection is. Uh, an order of protection is a court order basically meant to uh, protect a either the petitioner or another protected party from abuse at the hands of a family or household member. So. Um, there's got to be abuse, and there's got and the relationship between the petitioner and the respondent, or the protected party, and the respondent has to be that of a family or household member. Two things to bear in mind, and I always give this caveat: the term abuse is very broad. It includes non-physical abuse, so stuff like harassment, manipulation. Uh, the other thing to remember is that the term family and household member is very broad. It includes uh, ex-dating relationships or f- former living situations, even if you're not currently roommates. So if you don't think that uh, what's occurred to you is abuse, you may be wrong about that. You can check out our article and video about what constitutes abuse. If you don't think you have the right relationship, um, you might be wrong about that too. Uh, our article, uh, Illinois Orders of Protection Explained, explains that. Um, and if you can't, if you don't qualify because you're not a family or household member, you may be eligible for a stalking no contact order, and that's going to be one of the next videos we do. So anyway, we've talked about what an order of protection is. Let's talk about if you want to file an order, file a petition for an order of protection, what you actually have to file. There's three documents that you have to file to initiate an order of protection case. Uh, one is the petition. The petition basically lays out the allegations that give rise to a cause of action for an order of protection. We're going to go over later what those allegations are. It basically states the fact of the case and requests whatever relief you're requesting in the order of protection. The second thing that you attach to the petition is an affidavit. Basically, you have to verify that the facts that give rise to the cause of action are true, and you do that by signing, signing an affidavit, you know, swearing under oath that what you're claiming is true. The third thing you need to file is something called a seven-day summons. A summons basically lets the respondent, the the person you're trying to get the order of protection against, um, lets them know that the order of protection is fi- has been filed or the petition for the order of protection has been filed and where and when the hearing for on the petition is going to be, or at least the initial court date. So uh, orders of protection use a seven-day summons because usually there's a a seven-day return date given. That's the date that everybody comes back into court, as opposed to a standard civil summons, which is about 30 days. So those are the three things that you need to file, the petition, the affidavit, and the seven-day summons. Uh, the summons is going to be served along with the petition and affidavit um, upon the respondent by personal service. And that means served by the sheriff, by a special process server who's like a professional responsible for uh, serving people with summons, um, or by certain types of certified mail. So you you can't just mail the petition and your summons to the uh, to the respondent, you actually have to achieve personal service, which means someone basically hands it to them and says you've been served with process. That way the court can effectuate the wide range of remedies that are available for orders of protection um, and respect the person's due process right because they're entitled to no- notice in a hearing. And if they haven't been properly served, they haven't had notice uh, or a hearing. So next, let's talk about what has to be included in the petition for order of protection. We talked about the petition being the document that has the allegations that give rise to a cause of action. So what do you actually have to allege? You have to allege that either you, the petitioner, or one of the protected parties, you know, a minor child or someone who's unable to file the petition themselves, has been abused by the respondent. So you have to allege abuse. And again, the definition of abuse is very broad, and you should allege the specific fact not just the bald statement, I've been abused by the respondent. You have to uh, allege that the respondent is a family or household member of either your, you, the petitioner, or the party you're trying to protect. And you have to state whether there are any other cases pending between the petitioner and the respondent. So if this is 
part of, you know, if there's a divorce case going on between you and the person you're trying to get the order of protection from, you have to state that that case is pending and give the case number and what court it's in. Um, it, you should know that Illinois courts are prohibited from charging fees for filing, amending, certifying, or photocopying uh, petitions for orders of protection or orders themselves. They're also prohibited from charging fees for issuing summonses. The sheriff will also not charge a fee for service of process. So this is different from a lot of civil cases where there's you usually have to pay you know a, at least a hundred dollar fee to file the case. Sometimes more depending on the nature of the case. You have to pay the sheriff to serve process on the defendant. In an order of protection case, they want to make sure that people that, that the money um, doesn't prevent p- people from being protected from the, the respondent to the order of protection. So uh, the, the government, the courts and the sheriff don't charge fees for filing or serving orders of protection. The next thing we're going to talk about is where you should actually file your order of protection. So in the Illinois court system, each county has a separate circuit court. Um, And it's important that you file in the appropriate venue, otherwise your case might be dismissed or the venue will be changed to the appropriate venue. So what's an appropriate venue? What what court can you actually file in? Uh, It can be any county that the petitioner you reside in, uh, any county that the respondent resides in, um, the county where the alleged abuse occurred, or a county where you're temporarily located if you weren't able to find suitable housing in your original, in the same county that you normally reside in. So any of those four places will be a valid place to file the petition, and you as the petitioner get to decide which one you want to file in. Um, You should, when you're filing, consider whether it makes sense to join the order of protection to an ongoing civil or criminal case. a, an order of protection may be joined at the petitioner's discretion uh, to ongoing divorce cases or civil or, or criminal cases that uh, are against the respondent. So you can basically have it be under the same case number and have it heard along with all the other matters in that case if you decide to join it. And you, it, that's really up to you as the petitioner, although the respondent may have the ability to request that it be joined if you don't. Um, it must be consolidated. Your order of protection must be consolidated with any on, ongoing divorce cases. So it's uh, civil and criminal cases. It's basically um, up to you whether to join them. Divorce cases, dissolution of marriage cases, uh, have to be joined to the the petition for an order of protection, regardless of which is filed first. Uh, whether what, regardless of whether the uh, you're filing independently or you're joining the case, your order of protection case to an ongoing civil, criminal, family law matter, um, the summons on the order of protection has to be still served personally. So a lot of times when you're giving notice in a civil or, or domestic case, you just have to mail your notice to the, the notice address that's listed on the court file of the other party. In this case, even if you're going to join the order of protection to a, a pre-existing case, you can, it's not enough to just mail the summons and the petition. You have to actually get personal service anyway. So that's how you file an order of protection. We talked about what documents need to be included. We talked about what allegations need to be included in the petition where to file, how to serve process, and and we talked a little bit about joinder with existing cases. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. Thanks. Bye. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizeyourbusiness.com. And visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.